Good evening and welcome back to SA Wine Weekly. I'm your host Nathan Goad and tonight we have got a fully packed show. Hang on a minute, we've got James Hamilton from Golden Child Hello. Wines. How you going mate? Good mate. Good. Yes. And we've also got the beautiful... Oh, I'm beautiful tonight. Well, you're looking more Thank beautiful. With, oh. No, I'm not saying anything about James, but myself. Okay. Obviously okay. making you look good, like usual. <laughs> Holly the wine Thank lover. Thank you, Nathan. How are we going this week? Yeah, very well. I'm right. very so excited. I'm going to jump straight into... We've got five wines tonight. Five cheese pairings with them. A little bit of pate. Not that you want to no. put A little bit of um, quince paste. Just put a bit of sweet in there and no meat for you. James and I got a little bit yeah, of keep the meat, meat as well. Okay, so Sounds five good. awesome wines we've got and five awesome cheeses. We'll give a shout out to Cheese to You over there at uh, in the Seaford Ghetto. I mean, Seaford Meadows, not the Seaford Ghetto, Seaford Meadows. <laughs> Here it is, Cheese to You. Look, look at that strapping guy out there. Oh, that's a nice that. photo. Yeah, it is a great photo, isn't it? I think I would, they, I would go in there. You would? Yeah. I wouldn't let you through the door though. Yeah, I'm blocking the door. Yeah, struggle. <laughs> All right, so we're going to jump first in, into the wine. So, what are we tasting first? Uh, so this is our Island Life Fumé Blanc. Island Life. Island Life. Right, right. Fumé Let, let's start with that. Fumé Blanc. Am I Why Island that Life? That's right. Um, Don't worry about no, that. No, we're in in Bali a few years ago on a trip after harvest, and this is the first time I'd made this wine, and it was sitting in barrel, and uh, yeah, I guess. Um, we thought of the name there. Um, it's just it's, this this wine. I think Sauvignon Blanc, when it's made this way in oak barrel, it has this spring sort of summer feel to it. So, so not your traditional Sav Blanc. No. So um, tell us a little bit about the difference. Okay. So Sauvignon Blanc, typically in Australia, New Zealand, uh, it's made in stainless steel tank. It's machine picked. It's big volumes. Essentially made in a Sauvignon Blanc factory, if you will. Oh, so we're now in Bunk Factory. Yep. We hand pick. Uh, we're a pretty small batch. We ferment in barrel like a Chardonnay. So a Fumé Blanc to me is Sauvignon Blanc fruit yeah. made like a Chardonnay. And, and the name comes just quickly from an area in France known as Poi Fumé, right. which is where they make Sauvignon Blanc in barrel. So this is a traditional. I didn't French... know we were actual educational. Yes. Yes. Oh, there we go. Looks like so, that way. so this is a. a Basically, uh, a traditional French version of Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, a traditional French version yeah. of Sauvignon Blanc. Or an adult. We, we like, also like to say Sauvignon Blanc for adults. So. Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, it's really um, unique colour. Yeah. Like, compared to, to most it, that it you drink. It gets uh, more of a golden hue yeah. um, compared to your usual Sauvignon yeah. Blanc from the barrel ferment. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Sauvignon Blanc typically um, yeah, is a really clear, it's almost yeah. crystal clear. So. These are nice glasses. They are very Where nice. Where did you get these ones from? Well, it happened oh. to be uh, donated to us by one of our excellent sponsors. Ooh. And his brand is Promotional Products. Anything, anything you need with his logo on it, any Golden Child logos you need, put anything. Like maybe even a um, bottle opener. Oh, we yeah. should do a bottle opener. We should do a bottle opener. <laughs> We're just talking great. about that. And great glasses. The smell, mm. you don't even put, you have to put your yeah. nose in the glass to smell I just, it. I just went straight for a yeah. sip. It smells like spring, right? Um, yeah, it does smell like spring. Think of uh, citrus, you know, white flowers, You've got a bit of a cut straw character. Um, it's, yeah, it's just spring in a, in a glass. Delicious. Um, All right, I'm going to have a taste. What sh what, tell the punters, what should I be tasting? And then I'll tell you whether, whether it's true Again, or not. okay, so barrel fermented Sauvignon Blanc can get a smoky aspect to it. So I'd say you'd get a bit of smokiness. Smokiness. Yep. Uh, you would get, we use older barrels, so the idea is not to get the oak flavour, but to get the texture you get from fermenting and maturing in oak. Uh, you would get grapefruit, you would get citrus. Citrus, the yep. smell I'm, citrus. I'm the citrus yep. up, but it's not yep. overpowering. No. That's what I like. It's Grapefruit, really... um, and they talk, uh, some people don't like to use this term, but they talk about a minerality. And I don't okay. like using that term because there's... Holly and I just look like... Yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> right. Okay. But it just has this really pure essence to it, I suppose. So, so yeah. make sure, and we are a very interactive show, so throw your comments out. We've got five bottles of wine tonight for people to win, so 
throw your comments out and um, ask James why he's here. He seems to be like a pool of knowledge, very well educated. So ask him any questions. I'd really like to see one that stumps him. So throw us at you winemakers that are watching, throw something out that he may not know. Holly probably know the answer anyway. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, would, I know it all. So you said, you said smoky. Yeah. So... Um, I showed the lady. You get a smoky character. Yeah, there. I do. I showed the yeah. lady from uh, Cheese to You, yeah, your wine list, and she actually picked yeah. a smoky cheese to pair it with. Perfect. Ooh. So she might know. That works wine. really well. Mm. She might. Yeah, she must. Would, right. would you pick that as Sauvignon Blanc if someone gave it to you? I wouldn't. I think the Sub Blancs that I've had are quite dry a lot of the time. Yeah. But I, yeah, it's completely different. But um, and probably lack that, that textural. Yeah, element. this just has so much flavour. Like yeah. There's so much happening in your mouth. Yeah. So. It's like a Chardonnay, it's, again, made yeah. made from Sauvignon Blanc. So. Now, yeah. we were told that... Um, oh, hang on a sec. Jerry Zimmer. Ooh. These labels are truly unique. It makes me feel like summer is coming. That's an excellent That's question. The idea. That is an excellent mm -hmm. question. And um, probably why the wine was named like that. Absolutely. Right. Yep. Sunshine in a bottle. Oh. I think one review said it was sunshine in a bottle. So sunshine in a bottle. So a, yeah, re I agree. a review I agree. said that. A review yeah. said that. Right. Excellent. So let's both. let's try this cheese. Holly, hope you yeah, send it my way. Hope I'm hungry. Thank you. This one's mine because it's a bit tainted. It's got a bit of blue on it. All right. That's all right. Bit smoky, so that one. we won't all eat at once. Holly, you know you go first. That's fine. Uh oh. Oh. Oh, hang on, Michael. Will it age? That's a great question. I, I, it's got More, better than a normal Sav Blanc? Yes, better than yes. normal Sauvignon Blanc. So I told you on yours. Perhaps not as well as a, a Chardonnay, but I, I would say this, oh, I think five years um, mm. for this. Again, Obviously in the right conditions. Yes, yeah, but we, we often think of Sauvignon Blanc as not being out of age, but with that, that texture and that fruit intensity and that acidity, um, definitely think it could age for up to five years. Five years. Yeah. So we always say on this show, our winemaker that came on originally said, there's no point putting it away for five years. You've got to buy a couple of bottles or six, drink a few now, yeah. put a few away, drink some in a couple of years' time, and drink you some never in really five years. Well, you yeah. don't, do you? And if you've got nothing to compare it against, yeah. how do you know? Yeah, that's yeah. true. So tell me, before you have that last beer, because I know you're hungry. I know, I'm so hungry. Did it change the taste of the wine? It kind of brings out the smoky a little bit more. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Another question. Oh, De Debbie. Debbie Matheson. I need to taste that wine. Looks so good. Mm. It does. Wow. It does. She's probably very jealous right now. She yeah. is very I jealous, imagine. I think. Mm -hmm. the cheese pairing go? Does it work? Yeah, perfect. Yeah? Mm. yeah. I'm, I'm going to have a go, so you yeah. guys have a little chat about it. I love the cells. sweetness of the cheese, but then you get the acidity from the wine with that slight sweetness in the cheese, so it works well. Yeah, look at it's that colour. It's beautiful. Quickly. I had a question for you after I finish this mouthful. Um, how much will the colour change as it ages? Oh, It'll change. Um, it changes in barrel because barrels um, are porous in yeah. wood. So that, that is why, again, Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc made this way. Um, gets a golden... Oops, sorry. A golden hue to it. Sylvia? <laughs> Sylvia? Hi, Holly. Is it sweet? No. It, it, like it's not overly think, not, sweet. Not like a normal no. sample, is it? Oh, we've got a winner. <laughs> oh, Sylvia won. Sylvia won. Yay. Right. Mm. Oh. So there's no residual sugar. Oh, that's much mm. better, guys. That is much better. Now we can see the questions. <laughs> Sylvia. Hi, oh, Holly. Is it sweet? No, I don't think so. No. I'll answer for you. No, I don't think so. Not like a normal... Because no. this, no. is, this is more it's, for it's, your um, grown-up people. Yeah. So a, a conventional Sauvignon Blanc would, would physically have sugar left, like they would stop fermentation before the sugar's fermented out. Oh. We ferment dry, yeah. so any sweetness you're tasting is, um, you know, fruit fruit sweetness, not not physically not phys sugar. Yeah, sugar, sugar. sugar. Yeah. We yeah. can't miss Luke's question. Do you grow all your own fruit? Uh, yes, everything except the Chardonnay that you'll taste tonight. Which right. is from our neighbour, uh, about two kilometres down the road. I'm going to ask a question about you for you. I already know the answer because I yeah. asked you while we were up there tasting. But so, on your vineyards that you've got at the moment, up yep. the top of Kaipo. Yes. Yep. So we're pretty unique at Kaipo. We're the most southern part of the Adelaide Hills. So we're Adelaide Hills GI, legally Adelaide Hills. But yeah. we're probably the only part of the Adelaide Hills that gets a, a maritime influence. 
Because wow. um, we're about 15Ks. A maritime influence. Yes. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a great wine making team. There you go. <laughs> so those winds that go through McLaren Vale uh, yeah. in the afternoon and cool down McLaren Vale, they then come up the hill and come through the southern hills as well. So. Right. So maritime. wine tea. I feel like we're, we're rushing. I'm actually sweating. Yeah. I know. I'm, I'm working hard. I'm working hard. Here to get through. So, so wine two. What have we got? This is our, our beach bum rosé. So it's a rosé. A, a pinot noir oh, rosé. A, a pinot rosé. Yes. But this is a barrel fermented, dry, savoury, complex rosé. So Most not, people think rosé is sweet, don't they? Yep. So yeah. again, talking about Sauvignon Blanc being sort of bastardised in Australia, big volumes. Sauvignon Sorry, Blanc factories. Uh, there's a lot of rosé factories too, but machine pick, um, bang it through tank, and it's in bottle three months later, and you know, out in the market, and that's their cash cow. Um, right. We, we hand pick Pinot Noir, we press it into barrel, we use what they call wild yeast fermentation, and it stays in barrel for about Stop. six Stop. months. Wild, wild yeast, yeast fermentation. <laughs> yeah, wild yeast fermentation. I'll get Holly to explain. No. Oh, yeah, I can explain that. Easy. You can? Uh, yeah, no. Is the <laughs> yeast of the grapes <laughs> when they pick it oh. is used rather than adding yeast yes. to the process? Okay. Yeah. Right, you weren't listening earlier? You weren't, <laughs> weren't paying attention, were you? Right, so wild, yeah, wild yeast fermentation. Us, I was only mimicking what you told me earlier. <laughs> tell us really what happens. There are yeasts mm. living in the vineyard, and the thought is the more sprays you use, synthetic sprays, you're going to damage that, um, that yeast and bacteria population in the vineyard. So, you know, if you had a, a, a vineyard that had been sprayed with a lot of things, uh, you're probably not going to have a great wild yeast fermentation. You'd bring the fruit into the winery and you're probably going to add some packet yeast that you've bought from the laboratory. Um, when you use more hands-off viticulture, you, uh, you feel that perhaps your uh, vineyard's healthier and there's yeast uh, living on the, on the skins of the grapes. So we bring the grapes into the, the winery. We press the juice out and then we leave it. And three or four days later, um, this juice is in barrel and just starts fermenting from the yeast that were coming from the vineyard. Well, don't forget we're live and interactive and mm. you've got to kind of interpret because a lot of people are drinking the wines mm. while we're talking about it. How much? Oh, how much, right. <laughs> Good word. How much production or...? No, how product? much does it cost? Uh, this is 25... Well, it might have been how much yeast. Maybe you could elaborate more on the question, would be better, wouldn't it? But how uh, much does it cost? Let's uh, start there. This is 25 retail. And it's a real small batch, isn't it? Yeah, we make about 400 dozen of this. Awesome. And you can order online? Online, the yep. yep. Yeah. Perfect. Or they can ring you up. They can ring us up, go yep. on our website, yep. Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, we'll go through all your Getting socials. Getting sales from me. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There, you go. there we go. Look so at this. Nice. Golden Child Wine Socials. So ah. there's a website. Perfect. There is a website. Um, we've got Facebook. Who Instagram. does your socials? The wife? Uh, me. Yeah. yeah. You're actually really good at them. Oh, yeah. thank you. No, no we're, we're impressed. Oh, well, we were actually giving your wife the No, she's yeah. busy looking thank after you. our six, four and two-year-old, so. Right. Um, there we so go. I do that too. Thank you. So, what, what's this? Quince? No. Pace? Yeah, a bit of quince paste. with a bit perfect of, with it. Yeah. Bit of quince paste with also some um, pickled onion cheese. Ooh. So something a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. I thought like the onion go. might go well. I thought it would be sweeter, but it's not. Yeah, no, dry. No. Real dry. So rosés have changed a lot yeah. in Australia yeah. in the past five or ten years, and now there's that influence from Provence in France mm -hmm. where the rosés are bone dry. So this is dry, right. um, but it's textural from that barrel fermentation. So. Oh, hang on. Sal, hey Sal, how are we going? Your labelling is spot on. Thank you. Cheers. Spot on. Great work, Sam. So I love rosé when you do wild fermentation. It gets this cut straw character. I'll keep going back to cut mm. straw, but tell me that doesn't smell like a hay bale. Can you smell it? Do you get that? I, I do like get savory that. savoury cut straw character. You know what, mate? And that is from wild yeast. How good's that cheese pairing? Yeah. Go and have, have a go. I'll have a go. I've finished now, my cheese. Yeah, you're a bit hungry today, Holly. Yeah. We, should fe hungry. we should feed Holly before these shows from now on, Crew. So. Right? Um, not your usual rosé, and I love Pinot. Pinot is my favourite mm. flavour, as the majority of people found out last week because I influenced the guys who actually, or well, the week before, sorry, when we had Lambert Wines on. Yeah. I influenced him, and we were supposed to be doing Shiraz, and I kept hinting Pinot, Pinot, yep. Pinot the whole way through the show, and he changed the last wine to a Pinot. 
and it was delicious. And yeah. Adelaide Hills. Yeah, Pinot. Adelaide Hills. So why is the hills so much better for Pinot? Climate? Uh, basically colder climate. Yeah. yeah. And, and cooler nights. Oh, who's that winner? The winner is... Sal! Oh, well Yay, done, Sal. Congratulations! We're going to have to... Um, so where, we where did the labels come from? Like who did them or...? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Good oh, so You're good friends of mine, um, Kim Jericho and, and uh, Erica Brady have their own... They're called Brady & Co. They do mm -hmm. their own, they've got their own company that does labels. Oh, awesome. oh, they even trying to give them a shout out. Yep, like. so yeah, Kim, cool. Kim, good mate of mine, he, can't, he designed the logo, he did our labels. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've known him since we worked at the awesome. Goody when, uh, when we were at uni back in the, the mid-2000s. But um, great, <laughs> great guy. Yeah. Oh, uh, and so, yeah, they're doing great things down there. They live down in Eden Valley. Excellent. So I think Rosé... It almost needs another name. It's not. It doesn't taste like a normal rosé. No. Not so do you see all. that texture from the barrel fermentation? Definitely. It's more textural, less linear, and more textural and, and complex, I suppose, yeah. than yeah, your typical rosé. Okay. I've got a question. Where does the concept behind Golden Child come from? Uh, so my dad grows basically most of the fruit mm -hmm. we use for this brand, and um, he planted the vineyard in 97, just bought some grazing land and, and planted a vineyard. And... Um, yeah, my sister and I growing up, my sister had a lot of banter between us about who was a golden child. So it's, it's funny you say that because I know my brother's going to be watching, like that. Yeah. and he is the golden child. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> he broke a fish tank one day. I was in the room with him. He ran off, came back, the fish tank was broken, I got blamed for it. I wasn't even oh, in the room when it happened. No. And the golden child got I away had with the it. same. <laughs> I had exactly the same as well. So I yeah. Your mum's not agreeing. I oh, know she's. No. <laughs> Who's the gold? Is she the golden child? Holly the golden child, mum. No, no, not the golden child. Definitely. Black not. sheep. Oh, yeah. What a what a beautiful sheep. vineyard. Oh yeah. yeah. Thank you. It was so peaceful up there. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it's a beautiful site. Just lucky awesome. that you know, Dad grows beautiful fruit. Yeah. So how do you book a, a tasting? Uh, basically through our website, just email us yeah. or on socials, and yeah. um, we we offer private tastings. Uh, oh, cool! Pretty rustic, but yeah, get, like an we'll get a cheese experience. platter. We'll, we'll drive around the vineyard, showing different things in the vineyard, and then taste some wines. So there's yeah. no time frame. It's it's pretty laid back. Sounds good to me. Yeah, sounds like a really good, different yeah. sort of experience. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty cool while we were up there, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. I loved it. So we, well, obviously, we headed up there and had a little bit of a taste while we were up yeah, there. We sure did. Which is probably one of the most fun things about doing the show, but mm. this so drinkable. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not sweet. It's the no. dryness. No. Could, yeah. I, I could, you know, you can almost drink this in pints. Yeah. And your um, your bottle's so clear. Yeah. Must be is it flint flint glass. Yes, that you use? that's right. No, yeah. flint. That's right. So. Mm. Um, is, it, is it flint on all the bottles, or is it just we use flint on everything uh, mm. in our spring our oh. spring release? These are our five spring releases. So our lighter reds are in flint too, because they sort of look lighter. It's all the rage, so. isn't it? It's all the rage. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, a lot of red wines now, like we were talking about the, um, the other day, but whites have sort of become more textural, mm -hmm. and then reds have become lighter, and, and red and white styles are sort of meeting in the middle now. We're now fermenting white wines with skins too. So everything's sort of in the middle, which means it goes with everything. Yeah. Our reds you could drink with fish or chicken, um, whatever. So. Or you could just have pickled onion cheese with yeah. quince paste. Sure. That was beautiful. Yeah, that was, that really was nice. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I was that... a bit um, unsure of the quince paste with the pickled onion, but it kind of worked. Yeah, yeah no worries. Really nice. Yeah, I thought that worked well, <laughs> You can organise it next time. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> All right, let's... Um, oh, hang on. What is flint glass? Clear glass. Right. Do you want to elaborate a little bit? I just want uh, you to so I can change wines. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, El I'm elaborate on not a, I don't make bottles, so... No, I'm not, you can make no it expert, up. But you can let uh, us flint, know. Yeah. The two that we mainly put in it, but again, most... <laughs> I suppose new school producers are putting reds in them too. So. Yeah, that's a great idea. Oh. So... Love that texture in that rosé. Yeah. So, good. yeah. so I'm getting that you don't. So I don't want to give it. I don't want to yeah. give it away. Yeah. Give it in. No. Give it in. No. All right. We got. Th you got three more. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, something a bit. Oh. Something a bit cloudy up next. So Ooh. unfiltered. I should mention that the rosé. We don't filter our wines, so the rosé is unfiltered as well. All right. So turn around so that people can there see what you're talking about. But so this is our orange wine. Oh, the storm chardonnay, but known as orange wine. Known as orange wine. 
Um, or skin contact wine, we like to call it. Skin contact, uh, yeah, I don't know if that sounds rude. They, they call it orange wine in Europe and other parts of the yeah. world. The problem is we have a wine region called Orange. Oh, we do, in New South And they, they got quite upset about it, and I, I don't know if it got to legalities, but right. we now typically probably call it skin contact in Australia. We actually learn about orange wine yep. with Jill. We'll give a shout yep. out to Jill. Yeah. Um, you might, you, you probably know Jill, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Gary Gordon, Ben Asurf, you yep. know Gary as well. Um, so Jill, uh, yeah, from Fort Jill Gordon-Smith, yeah. Yep. Now, Sal, is your vineyard biodynamic? I, I just, just saw, saw the, the sheep. sheep. Can't so not, not certified. Uh, we use organic practices, not biodynamic, which are a bit different. Um, but... Um, organic practices, but not certified yet. I, I would probably get certified, but at the moment it's still Dad's call. Mm -hmm. And being a bit old school, he always wants an insurance policy. You know, if we have a bad year and a really wet year or a bad year for disease pressure, um, you know, he wants mm -hmm. the ability to maybe spray every now and then if he has to. Yeah. Whereas I'd, I'd probably go for the certification. But, all right. So maybe down the track. Okay, let's have a t well, let's have a look first. Yeah, the colour. Cloudy, eh? Hey? Cloudy. Very but that cloudy. was a beer you call it hazy, like hazy IPAs, but in wine, I guess they talk about cloudy. So there you and go. Um, it almost it almost looks like a cider. Yeah, it does. A it? cloudy apple cider. Yep. This was Ooh. only bottled two weeks ago, so keep that in mind. But this Ooh. was just racked out of barrel and bottled, um, so no filtration, obviously. <laughs> I don't, people wouldn't know a great deal about orange. Obviously, it's an Italian yeah. variety or orange wine. Well, I didn't wine. know about it. But you want a bottle of it? I know. Well, yeah. Now I know about oh, it. Oh, now you know. Now Jill I educated know. most so of So you can us tell us how they're made then, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I can have a crack. So, um, I can have a crack at it, I reckon. Yep. You reckon? Yeah. Take an orange and, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> um, it, it's obviously um, got the fruit um, on, on top of the clay barrels. Is yours made in clay barrels or? Uh, and four A is how they would do it, in, yeah. and, and they use Quivery in Georgia and some Eastern European countries. But uh, but basically, Georgia, where wine was actually originated. Uh, yep, and that's they've been making orange wines for thousands of years. Northern Italy, they've got some uh, varieties like Robolo Gialla and some others that they ferment on skins. But in short, an orange wine. I guess traditionally in Australia, when we make a white wine, we would press the grapes, we get the juice out, we throw away the skins. And ferment the juice. The skins, that's what I was looking for. With red wines, we would um, de-stem or crush the grapes, but ferment the juice and grapes together. Yeah. Um, which is where we get all that beautiful red colour and tannin. Yeah, tannin. And, and flavour. So we do this with white wine. Yeah. We, we use Chardonnay, and instead of pressing it in a barrel, we ferment on the skins for one month. So this sits on the Chardonnay skins for one month. And then it's pressed off into barrel. Hey, oh, thank you. So I was expecting this to be really strong, and then you drink it, and it's yeah, it's easy. I mean, there's a bit more tannin. Yeah, you can that, taste than your that typical that, white that wine. comes through, but but it, it... oh, a question. Oh, Jerry, when and where did Sorry. James have his first ever drink of wine? First oh. ever drink of wine. Jeez, I don't know. Uh, I reckon I was probably. I don't know how much to say. Um, probably <laughs> four, no, it'd be four, probably fourteen or fifteen uh, at my parents' dinner table. I think. Excellent. They used to give me just a little taste or a smell um, growing up. So I said I was fifteen, I think, when Dad um, planted the vine bought the land and planted mm. the vineyard. So. And you always had kind of a drinkers. passion to get into winemaking. Yeah, I think so. I think. Um, With Dad growing such great fruit, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You wouldn't be the gold oh, child, yeah. gold <laughs> no, child if you didn't. Yeah. No, so uh, I did. I studied oenology, but then I did some other random things. Um, lived in Japan for a while and uh, travelled around Europe and, and America a few times, and then came mm. back and, and started working. So, cool. yeah. So here we go. Oh, the storm of Chardonnay. This on is skins. this is awesome. I've oh, got a winner. Jerry's won. Ooh. Good work, Jerry. See what happens Cheers, when Jerry. you let somebody else run the show. You win a bottle of wine. So characteristics, um, with that skin contact, you, you typically get like a, um, an, uh, an orange rind and a, a ginger sort of character, if you, if you can see that. Yeah. Um, so not your classical citrus grapefruit Adelaide Hill Chardonnay. You get a bit more uh, interesting elements, I guess. Now, I'm going to ask you a, a winemaker's question that, oh, I picked here we go. that I picked up from. A, I'm saying like I don't know what I'm talking about tonight, don't I? Yeah. So, well, I won't ask you a question while you're talking about that. Well, Holly, orange wine. Orange because of the colour? What about the smell? Do you pick up orange in the smell? 
Does, I, it smell, does it look like a white wine, but smell like a red wine? It does a little bit. Like well, it's, it's just that. It's just unique, unique I think. Yeah. yeah, like you can't really describe well, the... So you grow to love smell. them. I think the first few you have and you're like, wow, this is a bit different and mm -hmm. weird. But, I mean, it's a legit <laughs> style that they've been making for thousands of years. Um, Do you reckon it'll take off in Australia? It sort of is. I this? mean, it's mm. starting off with small, probably most small producers I know would be making an orange wine now or a skin contact wine. And I, I would say it's right on the verge of becoming a commercial style. Do you know what I, I reckon about it? It's a great wine, and I, I like the style of it. And how did it go with the wasabi and pate? Well, you didn't get any pate. I didn't get any pate. pate. pate no, it was beautiful, yeah. It was beautiful? Well, that spice, it matches the ginger and those savoury elements in the Chardonnay. The duck, oh, I didn't know whether you like wasabi. I thought I'd just slip it in there anyway. <laughs> but see, with the duck and truffle pate, oh, uh, that's pate. Great. yeah. Awesome. So tell me a little bit more about... So can I talk about this fruit just quickly? Yeah, talk about the fruit. So this Excellent. is from friends of ours, oh, yeah. Brackenwood Vineyard, that are also up at Kaipo. Um, they're about three kilometres from our site. So out of all the vineyards in Kaipo, I think they're probably the one that's most similar to us, if you're talking about Telwar or site. Um, they are biodynamic. So this is biodynamic Chardonnay. Uh -huh. uh, Hand-picked. Hand on a sec. Sally, this one's biodynamic. Mm. I actually asked you that question before. Yes, so this is the only one though, because this is from Brackenwood, the yeah, others. Yeah, yeah. So. Brackenwood, we'll, give it, we'll mention it one more time because then it'll sink yeah. in if we mention well, it three yeah, times. Exactly. Brackenwood, in Brackenwood. Kaipo also. Got it. Oh, Luke, what's, I mean, he's, he's interested in some of this. Yeah. What's the cost? This one? Yeah. Uh, 28 retail. 28. 28, not bad. Yeah, it's yeah. a good price. Not, it's a, it's a, I would buy it. Geez, that wasabi was warm. Yeah. And what about like in terms of sulfate? Is there much in here? Uh, we use. Quite a bit less sulfur than most yeah. uh, commercial wineries, I guess. Yeah. And did you say only a couple of weeks? For, that it's, it's been in bottle, yeah. yes. yes. So, so this how will, be, will the characteristics I, change I think, over time? I, I think with bottling it mainly mutes the nose. Right. So because we don't filter um, our wines, um, I find five or six weeks, so they really come back and they're, they're beautiful to drink after six weeks, whereas filtered wines can take months. And in my opinion, can change the flavour of the wine, anyways. Right. Uh, so that's why we don't filter. Or why that's why I don't filter it? because I want texture, and I feel it does strip, it, or it can strip taste. Okay. Of Maybe we've got a silly question. Does orange wine taste of citrus? No. Uh, no. I think no. It is a, that's, that's a silly question. No, it doesn't. <laughs> we just told you it's orange in colour. Right. Get that off. Get him off. Good. He's great at making. Anything you need with your logo on it? Here's the wine question. It's not, so <laughs> not so good. I think you should stick to promotional products, mm. really. You shouldn't even, yeah. yeah. Or coaching footy, one or the other. <laughs> That's delicious. So what do you think? Not too different? You know what? I'm, I think I'm going to grab a couple of bottles of this. Um, yeah, hint, hint. And um, yeah. I'm going I'm to drink one in six yeah. weeks' time. Because mm. you just said after six weeks. That's in a few right. months, this will be well, absolutely singing. Good. Yeah. And then it's pretty much all allocated, but um, I might be able to. So this isn't for sale. This is a 2020. Mm. Not for sale on our website because it's basically all, all allocated to distributors. But uh, we could find a few bottles for you, I'm sure. Oh, lucky. I was just about to say the show's over. Yeah. <laughs> so, so um, wait, oh, okay. That's a good one. Don't worry about Luke's question, just leave him for a second. I've got a heaps better question. Um, where, does, where does your wine get distributed? That was an inter interesting question you just asked. Yeah, but no, we'll bring it back up. Yep. Uh, where do we get distributed? Uh, we have different distributors in, on the East Coast and Adelaide and, and Perth. We um, haven't done much internationally yet. A bit to Singapore. We're about to send some stuff to New Zealand. Okay. Um, but some we real, haven't really some been Some real Sauv Blanc to New Zealand? I don't think they're taking the female. Yeah, <laughs> I think, I think they said there was too much. Mind you, this is quite different to New Zealand. Yeah, they might actually like it. Yeah, but no, I think they're taking more of the Pinot, and you love the Chardonnay and a few other, and the Rosé. So. I'm Excellent. just thinking of the surf. Is that how, I don't know, I feel like I get kind of a relaxed vibe drinking your wines. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, yeah. maybe that comes from the place the fruit's grown and, and the way yeah. it's made. Um, yeah. And then that's translated in the wines. But that's the idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's funny, we were talking about food pairing with wines, but I think the new thing is sort of pairing wine with lifestyle. So instead of saying, yeah. you could drink this Pinot with duck, it's more like, well, that's a light Pinot, you could chill it, put it in your esky and drink it at the beach. Um, and it's more about, you know, pairing it with lifestyle and just uh, yeah. 
and more that relaxed sort of vibe, I guess. So. Yeah, of course. What about pairing it with music? Yeah. Pair it with music too. I was too. just about, you stole oh, my stole question. Like sublime. Every time. Wait, <laughs> if you're going to drink our wines with music, it should be sublime, I think. Sublime. Sublime. Yeah. Very good band. Yep. Very good band. 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 From, uh, uh, yeah, California. And cool. Some great covers. Yep. Some great yeah. versions. I actually know who they are. My brother right. thrashed There you go. Yep. Oh, hang on, Luke's back up. There we go. Uh, very different wines made in very unique ways. Do you do traditional too? These are traditional. Right. Sauvignon okay. Blanc mm. has been fermented in barrel for, what, 800 thousand years. They've been making skin contact mm -hmm. wines in Eastern Europe and Northern Italy for thousands of years. Yep. They so were doing wild yeast fermentations and, mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff well before, you know, you could buy packet yeast from a from a laboratory and that sort of thing. So I think that's a thing newer producers like us are going back to the way things were. So you're done. going back to old school. Yeah. The, the way things used to be. Maybe so not old like school that. Australia, but old yeah. school Europe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excellent. Like Good work. All right, so we awesome. will um, we should probably move, move on. on. Yeah, move on to the next wine. Excellent. Traditional to some people is what they were drinking 20 years ago. But yeah, M maybe you if know, he, when you're um, thinking of yeah. in the context of uh, hundreds of or thousands of years. So. Yeah, so it's traditional as in... Oh, thank you. Australian tradition is probably a lot different to... Yes. Yeah, that, that's probably what he was So it's an at. interesting contextual question. So, so we're probably, are we looking at the Pinot patch yet? Here we go. Uh, yeah. What are we looking at? Uh, that is our... That would be our Sauvignon Blanc, our other Sauvignon Blanc block. Right, we've got more Five than one. Sauvignon Blanc, we've got two blocks. Yeah. So I'm um, pouring the Pinot a little bit more for myself, a bit less for you guys. <sighs> This is what we had last time. So, obviously, colour is so that colour. We always like the colour. In and we could see flint, it just in that video. Glass. In flint glass, yeah. In flint glass. I don't know if the glass is a flint glass, but the bottle is. The bottle is. Yeah. <laughs> we have to ask Greg. Yeah. Whether it's flint glass, or, or maybe we should could start a new trend. Ooh, the glass is made out of flint glass. Idea. Ooh, Ooh yes. look at that! See the ideas we come up with on this show. So, all right. Pinot. So good. I'm just excited because it's a Pinot. Mm. Yeah, me too. I've been teased for years mm. by the, <coughs> the Petrucci's about oh. my, my love for Pinot because they reckon I wasn't a real wine drinker. Because they can't grow it in McLaren. Ah, oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I actually know why. Yeah, that's right. Let's have a big well, no, I think uh, Bella bought, I think there's a few people that still have Pinot in the bale, but anyways. Yeah, we should probably shouldn't have said Don't that. forget yeah, to yeah, comment. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. We'll just say the Petrucci's don't grow Pinot. No. Right. No. I do grow some amazing grapes and make some amazing Absolutely wine. Absolutely, good grapefruit. Yeah, yeah. I thought we'd backpedal for you a little yeah, bit there yeah. anyway, otherwise you might have Joey on, <laughs> on your doorstep. So that Ooh. nose, you know, that just red so fruit. Again, it's spring. This is spring red wine. It's um, mm -hmm. it's vibrant. It's fresh. And you can drink that chilled, like slightly chilled. Yeah, we like to slightly chill it. Yeah. You could put it in your esky and take it to the Ooh, beach yeah. in summer. Yeah. That would be a good yeah, idea. Good idea. So I guess this is how red wine production has changed in Australia. Is that traditionally you'd make a Cabernet or Shiraz, you'd, you'd mature it in barrel for 18 months and then you'd bottle it. Mm -hmm. Whereas this was three months in barrel. And so when you bottle a wine earlier, you sort of catch it, capture that energy and that freshness that you might lose if you're trying to mature for longer in barrel. And the flavours change. So the, the trend now with red wines, I guess, or what we want to do is capture that energy and, and that freshness. So hopefully you can see that that freshness and vibrancy in the in the glass. Definitely. Oh yeah. The colour too. Is it a little bit lighter than a usual Pinot? Pinot is pretty light. I mean, this is unfilled again, so it would be clearer if we'd filtered it. But right. So that's where you get a bit of the cloudy. So yeah, it looks yeah. a bit cloudy. Maybe that's what it is. It looks a little yep. bit cloudier. But the colour is pretty light. Uh, Hills Pinots are a bit lighter, anyways, but. Because we pick earlier, so it's low alcohol. This is oh. about 13% alcohol. I think sounds so paying attention more than most tonight. I think sangria. Mm. When I see oh. that, it looks delicious. Oh, it's a lot better than sangria. A lot better. Same vibe, I guess. Just uh, similar you can sort chill of vibe. It, chill it and, yeah. and smash it down. So. Will you be selling this wine online? Three minutes. I think Luke, <laughs> want, Luke, Luke wants to buy some Pinot, I think. So he's asking a question here. Will no. you be selling this wine online? Uh, 
So this was released about a month ago and is all gone. Last well, one month. Yeah, we. Sign. Yeah, so we, we only made two hundred dozen this year because of there were you probably heard there were tiny, it was a tiny yielding yeah. year. Yeah. Good fruit though. Fruit was great. Yeah. That's Again, my dad planted in ninety seven. It's the smallest vintage he's ever had in terms of production yeah. for the whole of the vineyard. This year was the smallest. Yes. Year. Yeah. Except the for like the first couple of years oh, when well. the vineyard stuck, but they don't really count. So, yeah. but quality looks great. Um, so only made two hundred dozen, and yeah, it's basically is all allocated to distributors. Um, so not available online, unfortunately. Here's a good. Here's, oh, this is a better question, Greg. Question. This is a much Very better question. Very good question. He's actually gone and thought about it yeah. after we <laughs> yeah. after we ruled him for his last question. Okay, which of your latest creations is your favourite? My golden child. Yeah, excellent. Oh. There we I think go. that's what he was um, looking for. Which I, is your golden well, child? Well, I do have a soft spot. I would say, if I, had, if I could pick two, no, I'll pick one. I'd, I'd say a Lazy Sunday Light Red, which is the next wine we'll taste. It's a Pinot Shiraz blend, uh, which we'll talk about was a traditional blend in the Hunter Valley in the 50s, has now made a bit of a comeback. But it's really the wine we made in our first year in 2016 and got, got a bit of traction. So it's probably the wine on, that put us on the map. It's the wine that put you on the map, so it's your golden job. Right, so what we've got here is some creamy blue cheese. So I know you love blue cheese. I love Holly. blue cheese. Thank you, Nathan. Do you like blue cheese? Very thoughtful. Absolutely. Oh, you do? Thank you. I don't actually like it. Care they don't you? Care they may be oh, eating it. Yeah. But I've kind of, the creamy's a little better. Okay, go got for it. Got a question? Up. Would there be much difference in taste if the wine was filtered? Oh, that's, oh. Open, that's opening up a whole, <laughs> a whole world of debate. Um, Wow. Good question, I, Caitlin. I'm going to say yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, I think it, I'm not 100% against filtering and you've got to make sure the wine's stable before you put it in bottle and it will be okay without sterile filtration. Um, uh -huh. And some wines can look better with filtration, but I think the style we're doing, I just feel you lose a bit of texture and a bit of individuality in the wines when you filter. So when you filter... You could filter two wines, and in my opinion, it will make them look a little bit more similar. Right. Whereas we're about individuality in the wines, and our our site as a grape growing, yeah, uh, as a vineyard. So I think for individuality, you're bit, perhaps better off not filtering. But, not filtering. but right. pe people yeah. would have arguments either way. So for someone who doesn't know what you're talking about, let's just say, sorry for when you're just about to have a bite, but would the filtering make it? More tasty or less? I think filtering will make... Because I think unfiltered, it's got more of, like, you know, like you said, like texture. Um, the yeah, taste texture, of it is got texture. pops a little yeah, bit more. So I, yeah. think, I think filtering will make the nose uh, a bit cleaner yeah. and more polished. Right. So I always, uh, the analogy I think of is just music. Um, you know, if you, you think an overproduced R&B song that's been audio-tuned and all this stuff... Yeah. It's really oh, polished. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it's really polished, but it, it sounds nice and it's catchy and really polished. But then when you go back to some of the 70s and 80s punk bands and, and rock bands and, and stuff, they, they have like that. Peg, Peg Boy? Yeah, Peg and, Boy. or Ramo, whether it's Ramones or mm. Social Distortion or whatever. Like, they've just got that. They've just got that, um, that edge to them. And I feel unfiltered filtered wines have that slight edge, I guess. So. Excellent. Yeah. Raw. The punk was guess, raw. The yeah. punk was raw. Punk was raw. And, and, uh, so how long has James been making his wines? Um, these wines? Uh, we started 2016. So I, How long have you been making wine? Uh, first harvest was 2004. 2004? Wow. So what's that? 16 years, I guess. Yep. But wow. Golden Child 2016 was our first year. So. And you're selling out Ooh, of everything you make we've, already. We've got a winner. We've got a winner. Winner's coming up. Is it me? Oh, Greg. Oh, it's Greg. Ah, congratulations. It was I'm good that he went away. I'm jealous that he's won this one. It's good that he went away and thought of a decent question mm. yeah. after we grilled him. Well so, done, Greg. Congratulations, well. mate. Well done. Oh, um, good luck to you. Yeah, we'll hang on to it for you, and Holly and I will more than likely drink it. That's open. Yeah, up possibly. That one, yeah. yeah, it's. Isn't it? It's yeah. starting to sing, yeah. So good. Wow. So, you. Would you could you or would you, let's just say it's a hot day, we're sitting back, we've just been surfing. We're having a couple of beers. Would you put it in a decanter to let it really breathe? Uh, you Would could, it make you it could or I'd probably just put it in a tumbler and, you know, just smash it down. It will, every glass will change. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what I like, too, about those younger energetic wines that haven't seen a lot of air during the winemaking process. Um, every glass is a bit different. You know, some of the commercial wines that have been 
racked 10 times and filtered and bottled with a lot of sulfur. Yeah. They kind of, the wine doesn't evolve, it sort of can't. But I feel these wines That's uh, what I, I love just most, keep evolving. love most about your wines. It's a unique taste. Like it's a yeah, the scent, thank you. the smell. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. Thank you. Might be really because tasty. it's so... Organic. Yeah. Maybe it's the sheep. Well, we have to give the sheep the sheep some credit. I don't, I don't know why Andrew yeah, has played it again. But <laughs> no, thank you. We well, give the sheep some credit sheep. while they're on. Yeah. I mean, anyway. when people say to me that our wines are a bit unique or a bit different or interesting, that's almost yeah. better to me than them saying it's, yeah. you know, it's a 95 point wine from whoever, you know. Um, You'd rather be seen as yeah. unique and yeah. interesting? Yeah. yeah. Less, yeah so the quality of the fruit. Yeah, through. I mean, the fruit is great. That's the starting point. And <laughs> Ooh, Sylvia. Sylvia. Don't laugh at me, but does filtering alter the alcohol value? That's not a bad question. We're not laughing at you. That's a, that yeah. Is, that is a pretty good question. Um, there, 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 there is a filter you can um, put wine through to remove alcohol. Right. Which really? you don't, don't often talk about, but we obviously don't do that. But... Um, but yours are a lighter style. Yes, so we, we so achieve... So what, what would the alcohol volume of this Pinot be? Uh, Labelled as 13%, so about 12.9%, I think, on this one. Mm. But so we, we, that, could be so that, that could be dangerous <laughs> yeah. at the beach in summer. Very so we, we achieve that yeah. by picking earlier. So when you pick mm. earlier, you get two things. You get lower alcohol yeah. and you get better acidity, which means you don't need to add acidity. Whereas if you're picking a McLaren Vale Cabernet at 17%, um, percent alcohol, you're probably going to have to do something um, to reduce the alcohol, uh, which a lot of people don't talk about. And yeah. you're also going to, um, uh, what was the other thing we are talking about? Uh, right. The alcohol, what was the other? Filtration was what we were talking uh, about. So we're trying to sort it in. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Have another wine. <laughs> yeah, another glass of wine. So, anyways, yeah. <laughs> All right, so should we go? We'll go back to the question before I fall off the table. Um, so, yes, filtration can alter the alcohol. Yes. Yes. Well, if you're filtering to remove alcohol, but in, in a typical filtration just for a bottling, probably not. No, okay. A minuscule amount, perhaps, but yeah. not, not, not that you'd notice. To, to say, let Sylvia know, then obviously, no, no it's not going to make a great deal of difference to the alcohol content. Cool photo. Not with normal filtration. Yes, yeah, that is a nice photo. Really cool photo. Yeah, thank you. That was my sister-in-law actually. Uh, ah. Melanie Bolzon Photography. So check yeah. it out. But she did. Oh, you're getting you're getting used to this yeah. dropping dropping yeah, so the names. Really yeah. the, the photos really complement. Yeah, wine. thank you. That, that raw kind yeah. of. Yeah, I just love that that golden Authentic. hue that the, yeah. the leaves have. Um, the, go, really the, go, the golden hour of McLaren Vale yeah. is uh, very well known. Yeah. And uh, obviously the Adelaide Hill. Oh, Oh, yeah. I don't know how you're actually classed as the hills when you're, you're like just on the doorstep. Basically, the, the, the fringy hills above McLaren Vale. Yeah, well, mm. most people wouldn't think it's the... Um, oh, I'm straight into pouring it before we're even talking about it, but um, you can chat about it. So what are we drinking here? Our fifth wine? So this is our, our Lazy Sunday Light Red. Lazy Sunday Light Red. Yes, it's uh, a Pinot Shiraz blend, or we, oh. we like to call it Syrah. Sorry, that was a bit mean. A Pinot yeah, Syrah blend. Pinot uh, Syrah. So 50-50 blend. So when, why do people say Syrah rather than Shiraz? Should I go into it? Yeah, uh, no, I'd like to because... Okay, uh, so the rest of the world calls it Syrah. Australia's ah. really the only country that uses the word Shiraz. Right. You're seeing it now with, I suppose, newer producers. Um, basically, if the, the, the Shiraz grape is grown in a warm climate like McLaren Vale, Barossa Valley, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you know it's going to be pretty full-bodied, alcoholic, a big wine, probably a lot of oak used... So a big style Shiraz from a warm climate is typically now listed as a Shiraz. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a Tasmania or an Adelaide Hills or a Yarra Valley Shiraz that's grown in a colder climate, it's going to be lighter and spicier and uh, we're starting to see that style labelled as Syrah. Wow, so this is your, your golden child wine? We're about to taste? I think so, yeah. Awesome. I'd, I'd, I'd so don't to forget to comment to win. I don't remind them about this one. Yeah, no, I know. No, no, don't. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll just keep it. So Pinot Shiraz, 50-50. Pinot Shiraz. So this, this blend um, came about in the 50s in Hunter Valley. Yeah. And they were making it as a red wine to cellar, as a serious uh, wine. Oh, hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. 
You know, if he did, here, sorry, excuse oh. me. Yeah, thank you. What we're pairing with this wine is a triple brie. You, you and I got the luxury. We'll get to that one, Dad. We got the luxury of having yeah. that duck truffle patty, you and I as well, mm. but Holly misses out. But triple brie cheese yeah. was the re recommendation. So let me know what you think. Should go beautifully. Yeah, go for it. I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk to the punters while we're. Now, 50 50. Pinot Shiraz. Luke, um, James, can I get this wine and what will it cost me? Luke's getting a bit frustrated that he can't get any <laughs> of your wines. Luke's all right, mate. I'll bring you some home, okay? Kenny? A lot of our wines... That is, okay. So this is our 2019 Lazy Sunday, which is sold out. Um, due to tiny yields this year, Dad wouldn't give me any Shiraz because it's contracted. So we didn't make one in 2020. So Ooh. you cannot... So you can't buy from us, like most of the wines. Um, yeah. Where could, where could he get it from? Okay, so if you want to buy online, and not just for us, but like legit, small, interesting, new school stuff happening in Australia, your best bet is a website called Different Drop. Different Drop. Different Based drop. in Sydney, deliver Australia wide. They've been a great supporter of us, but they have all the new, interesting stuff happening, and you can definitely buy that wine through Different Drop. Right. Different, you probably should have told us that. We could have had a slide. Yeah, I could have. Great, different, great different bunch drop. of guys. Um, but if, ben, yeah. ah, ben McDonald. We love Golden Child. Awesome work, James. Thank you, mate. That was nice of you. You know Ben? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's from Fenton's Convincing. Down oh, you, you are road, getting so. this name dropping mm. down. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that was what the hint was for. Yeah, he's across the road. Yeah, and we went to school at Tatachilla like 20 years ago or something. So. It wasn't that was not mm. it? Couldn't have been that long. So, um... You did mention that your wine goes with everything. Mm. So I, um, I've prepared some peanut butter jelly. Right. I think it will go beautifully with this. I do as yeah. well. And I've, I've put peanut butter and like a fig jam all the way from France. Really? Well, mm. I bought it from the supermarket. Oh, okay, but it, it's, right. it's from right. France. It's a French <laughs> you just French ruined shit. the whole story. I know. We didn't care. You got oh, it from the supermarket. Yeah. It came from France. came from France. Mm. Yep, from yeah. Marmont. And I've been there, so I can... Very Have nice. you been to France? I've you said you should. Yes. Yeah, yes I I yeah. yeah. Yep. cool. You seem to know a lot about French wine. Yes. So, Holly is trying to prove that your wine doesn't go with everything. So, we would we'll like definitely you to... Definitely go have, with that. Here we, we go. Come on, we want to see you have a okay. taste and you want to, want to tell us. Okay. So, what was, it, what was the difference once you had the cheese? The creamy texture of the cheese, what did it take... What changed? I'm asking Holly what you have a oh, taste. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. Oh, no. Getting all technical. No, just, well, just don't, don't, don't worry about it. technical. Just tell me what did it change at all? No, or? it definitely, definitely did change. Or you just ate it quickly and didn't have a drink. <laughs> well, just enjoy it. <laughs> right. Are you enjoying the food or the wine more? The wine. Excellent. Yeah, of course the I wine. I love that blend. No, it definitely goes well. Like anything creamy, I think with this wine pairs really mm. nicely. Um, did the peanut butter work? Because that's quite peanut butter's quite creamy. It did, and it's a bit sweet. We got the jam. I think Pinot Shiraz. When we talk about a Pinot Shiraz. The Pinot was offering. I'll just swallow my... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go for it. My jelly. So the, the, pin, the Pinot Noir component is adding some red fruits and some cherries and some strawberries. Yeah. Some really Peter pretty does. Adelaide Hills Pinot components. The Shiraz component, Adelaide Hills Shiraz is quite spicy and you talk about, um, you know, cranberries and white, white pepper and um, spicy red fruit component. So I think it really adds that spice and gaminess that complements the Pinot Noir. Oh, ben McDonald's a winner. Ooh. Oh, that, Work, might, that, that might have been a little bit rigged, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. been winning that one. Be nice for him to walk across. I'll, I'll drop in that. Oh, no, uh, i drop in that carton tomorrow, mate. Yeah, so, no, no, right. so you can that. drop across the road <laughs> yeah. and pick it up, really. But come in anytime you like, mate. Maybe do a video while you're in here, Ben. That'd be yeah. a good idea, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. That'd be a great idea. idea. Bit of a collab. Wayne Walsh. Ooh. So, James, what percentage of grape is your vineyard from purchased from other supply partners' vineyards? What percentage of grape is your vineyard? So, what, what Walsh is trying to say here, and I'd love to have a shout-out to Walsh. We're in the army together. Mm. Oh. Years and years ago, he's watching from... Oh, now, now I've got to try and think where he is. Um, New South Wales. Mm, okay. So, yeah, he's watching oh. New South Wales. Probably, um, a long way away. <clears throat> He's a long way away. He was in Queensland. Mm -hmm. 
And he would have loved the Pinot in Queensland. Don't yeah. want a wine either. Queensland anyway. is going nuts for us at the moment, actually. Um, I think it would. Yeah. Yeah. Let's answer Walsh's That's question. That's kind of what so. I picture, like yeah. surf, sun. And actually then down uh, the surf coast too, like Torquay, yeah. uh, Lawn. Um, I did a, a trade trip there at the start of the year, just before COVID hit, actually. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that sort of vibe. So he was asking the percentage of your own fruit do you use in your wine? For our wine? Yeah. Um, so the majority of it, except for uh, what Except you for that Chardonnay from Brackenwood. Brackenwood? Yes. Four times. People will start listening to it. Right. So all the fruit for your wine come, is um, from your vineyard, my dad, except for... That Chardonnay. So I would say, at the moment, 95% is from our vineyard. Good question. Good yep. question. I'm going to get a bit, bit of late. You didn't win anything, but good question, mate. Going to get a bit of Fiano from Jeff Hardy next year too. Ooh, Jeff Hardy yeah. down the road. Yeah. Oh, Matthew. Every Ma- golden child wine is a winner. I agree. Oh, thank you. Know I what? completely agree. That's from winemaker yeah. to winemaker. Mm. Yeah, he's a good man. He's he a good winemaker yeah. too, isn't he? Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go nice with the peanut butter jelly. Yeah, it would. Well, I, don't, I don't reckon because you still <laughs> got half of it there. So what do you think? Oh, I thought it was great. Oh, cool. Really good. Yeah. Um, this wine will match with pretty much. I, uh, I agree. Everything, I Anything. Yeah, yeah, well, for sure. Holly tried to prove you wrong, but yeah. couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. couldn't. No. But it did, it worked. Nice try. Yeah. So, I think we uh, might flash up who's on next week's show. We've got, a, we've got a bit of a different show for next week. Probably going a little bit away from the normal. We next are. Next week. Next week, we are going to go across the road to a brand new Italian restaurant. He's only just moved down the road. They are called... Oh, no. Tutoria de Roma. Tutoria de Roma. I try to I try to do the accent. I oh, know you were supposed to do I the Italian the accent. La Trattoria de Roma. No, ah, there you go. go. Not la. <laughs> si. la. Tutoria. Tutoria de Roma. Tutoria de Roma. Oh, no. Tutoria de Roma. Okay, right. I'll work on that for next week. So, if anybody else wants to have their food or wine on this show, all they have to do, if they want to be like James and get his wine out there, and um, please don't bring off five. Because uh, we had to get Holly's mum to drive her home because... Don't do that. No. Th- five Wines was awesome, though. Yeah. Mm. Oh, it was good. I feel like we worked hard. Mm. If you want to bring your wine or your food on the show, all you have to do is contact the Chief Video Marketing on their socials, or you can contact SA Wine Weekly, and the lovely Taylor will get back to you. Shout-outs to Taylor, doing an amazing job looking She's after great. all of us. She, she is, is great, isn't she? Yeah. She's a glue. She She's a glue behind sure. everything. So if you want to be on the show, let us know. We're getting pretty booked. So if you're interested in coming on the show, you're a winemaker and you don't have an avenue to show your wines, then jump on board and there might be a little bit of extra added value. Do you want to tell the punters about where else they might see it in the not-too-distant Oh, yeah. Oh, am I, am I allowed to yeah, reveal? Yeah, go for it. Go awesome. For it. The big so reveal. we are going to be on Channel 44, which is super exciting. You. So, yeah, yeah we're, we're moving up us. in the world. We're, we we're are. Right. So, we, did, we didn't tell you. You're actually going to be on <laughs> yeah, there soon. You'll be on there. You're oh, the first show that's on there. All right, all right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, uh, we know when it's on. Uh, sure yeah. will. So, we're, we're looking at toward the... Only a couple of weeks, isn't it? Yeah. A couple of weeks. Couple you'll of be weeks on. We'll be on. Wow. We'll let you know. We'll let you know on socials. We'll advertise the hell out of it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we will. And you can do the same because you did such a great job this week. I'll spread the word. Excellent. So, flash up the special, guys. A Father's Day special. There we go. Yes. So mix six pack of rosé and fumé. You can do any combination you like. Yeah. So you three get four three, or two or, two or three and whatever. three, five and one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for 120 with free delivery. So that's basically 20 percent off and free delivery. So. Bar- anywhere in Australia. Bargain. Awesome. Yes. Anywhere in Australia. So my sister would love this in Queensland. Yep. She loves getting on the specials. First phone call I get every time the show's finished from my sister. Is that include Brisbane? Yes, it does. I'll order one. Oh, she awesome. um, got Kurt. Oh, I have to say get my sister, touching, Chelsea, if you're listening. Yeah. <laughs> She's in Canberra, so. Wow. Maybe she can buy <laughs> one for Dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Ma- Chelsea, and Mum will probably drink ready it. ready for Dad. So we've got to say thanks heaps to Golden Child Wines. Yeah, if you're thank you. looking for their wine, which you can't get because he sold it all already, but it's going to be a big vintage, this one, isn't it? Next vintage. Fingers we'll, crossed, we'll, it's going to be a big vintage. Make a lot We're going to make some more wines. Yep. Shout also. out to Kurt for. Um, pushing us towards you to get you on. He's a good man. Cheers, Mark. We're much appreciated. You can have a chat to the Somos boys. Oh, shh. Sh- oh, sh- the Mexicans might be sneaking on. Yes. Holly's working on that All one. Right. Holly yeah. is working on that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, want to say thanks heaps to Cheese to you as well for the amazing platter that they helped us put together. And big shout out to you. Five wines. Holly, always a pleasure. Oh, 
saying I want to say Nathan. thanks everybody That's for lovely. tuning in as well. <laughs> thanks for tuning in to SA Wine Weekly and we would always say drink responsibly. Don't probably have five bottles of wine in one night. Between, I don't know, between three of us. Well, when they're 12% yeah. alcohol. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's right. So thanks heaps for watching and um, tune in next week for our very special Italian show across the road. 7 o'clock, SA Wine Weekly, Facebook page. See you then.